Um, thank you for allowing me to speak to you today. It's an honor. Um, my name is Erin. I'm a mom. I'm a business entrepreneur, and I'm a social advocate, but I'm also a cosplayer. There we go. So what is cosplay? Each character you see behind me is a version of me. Those are all the costumes that I wear, some of them anyway. While cosplay is becoming increasingly popular, I think it's a mystery to a large number of people. A lot of people associate it with dress up, and that's something that we think that children do. Well, let's explore that for a minute. So why do kids play dress up? Kids play dress up because they want to, they want to imagine being someone different, but also someone familiar. Someone like Superman, or Sherlock Holmes, or Batgirl, or Elsa. Someone larger than themselves. They want to explore what it feels like to take that in. Here's the thing, when a child takes off the dress-up clothes and they're done pretending for the day, make no mistake, they've taken something from that. Dress up for a child is a way to explore undeveloped facets of their personalities. When I was eight, I was a farm girl. That's me. I played in the dirt. I climbed trees. I rode horses. I was a tomboy, and I felt every bit of the insecurities that a girl feels when she's a tomboy. I did watch cartoons every Saturday morning, though, just like everybody else. And my favorite character on Saturday mornings was Wonder Woman. So what little girl doesn't want to be Linda Carter? She was this amazing Amazon. I identified with her strength, her beauty, her intelligence, her courage, and I wanted to be just like her. When I played dress up, whoops, <laughs> when I played dress up, I was her. I'll share a story with you. I was so much her that a little boy was visiting my house one day and I dressed up in my makeshift Wonder Woman boots and my headband. And I marched up to him and I said, I'm Wonder Woman. He said, no, you're not. And then he punched me in the face. True story. <laughs> There's the appropriate slide. <laughs> I cried. It hurt, and though it did make me take pause for a moment, it didn't stop me from playing dress up, and it didn't stop me from playing Wonder Woman. When I dressed up as Wonder Woman, all of my insecurities about being a tomboy and feeling out of sorts, they all went away. I felt courage, I felt pretty, and I felt powerful. Red headband and all. That's the only photo of that headband that I have, by the way. <laughs> I was able to combine my own traits with hers, and I was able to become a woman of strength and a woman of courage, and I felt powerful. As I grew up, I carried important pieces of that childhood transformation with me. I didn't know it at the time, but dressing up like a Wonder Woman would help me overcome a lot of obstacles in my life, like social anxiety, bipolar depression. It would help me put on a costume as, adult, as an adult and make a career out of it. Playing Wonder Woman would help me conquer my longtime fear of public speaking and stand up here and give a TEDx talk to you today. Allowing myself to dress up as Wonder Woman is, in essence, allowing myself to feel the empowerment of being a superhero. What I've just described to you is what cosplay is. That's what the root of cosplay is, and it's why so many people are drawn to it. As adults, we are still developing facets of our personalities. That never stops. Cosplay was born from the word costume and play, and though that's how the word came about, cosplay means so much more than just that. Cosplayers are a far-reaching network of hobbyists, enthusiasts, and professionals. Our individual sensibilities combined with, with our immense creative drive push us to learn new things about each other, and they push us to learn new things about ourselves every time we put on a costume and choose to become someone different. Cosplay is a rich and diverse and challenging art form. 
And like so many other artistic communities, when we step into it, we enrich our lives. Two people who paint or write or play an instrument immediately share a certain bond, and cosplayers are no different than that. For many, it can be what bridges the social constructs that can divide us on a daily basis. While we're in costume, we can allow those preconceived notions to filter away because they no longer apply to us. As with any art form, even when people may not be ready to pick up a paintbrush or pick up an instrument or get into a costume, we can still identify with and appreciate the courage and the depth of the art itself. And when you think about it, every classically trained pianist started out as a music lover, like I did. Every painter or illustrator starts out as an art lover. And every cosplayer starts out as a fan of cosplay. That's me, the queen. <laughs> <laughs> For some people, beginning an art form is an easy thing to do. They pick up a paintbrush and they paint a picture, they sit down at the piano and they play a song. But for some people, it's not that easy. For, for others, it takes time and courage and sometimes very difficult obstacles to overcome. Like I said, depression, social anxiety, self-doubt, fears, insecurity, societal pressures. Being so heavily involved with this art form and its dynamic and creative community has empowered me in more ways than I can count. And I've seen it have a positive and beautiful effect on so many people in so many ways. However, even in the most welcoming of communities, we can be misunderstood. We can run into negativity and judgment, whether it's from inside our own artistic communities or from just regular life. While one negative remark can have a lasting effect, a few positive words of encouragement can go so much further. About a year ago, a 15-year-old Brazilian beginning cosplayer messaged me on my personal cosplay Facebook page. Her town was having a convention. She'd never been to a convention before. She'd never made a costume. She'd never worn a costume. She was afraid she wasn't good enough. She was afraid she couldn't do it. She was afraid she didn't have what it took to be a real cosplayer. I told her what was once told to me when I had those issues, when I first started. That everyone starts somewhere. An artist is an artist the moment you begin to make art. And a cosplayer is a cosplayer the minute you decide that you're going to be one. Not only did she finish her costume, and not only did she go to her convention, but she entered the costume contest and she won an award. She messaged me and she told me that the award wasn't even the most important part to her. She said the most important part to her was being able to reach out to somebody and talk to somebody about her fears, to be able to get help, to jump out of her comfort zone and do something new that she'd never done before. One of the ways for me to give back some of the empowerment that I've gained from the cosplay community is by having talks like this one, by having talks like the one that I had with her, and by the creation of Heroes United Against Cosplay Bullying, which covers so much more ground than just what that name states. When people come to me and ask me how to deal with the negativity that humans can visit upon each other, I tell them what I'm about to tell you now. Surround yourself with positive people because they and only they are your reinforcements. Don't feed into the negativity, because when you do, you open yourself up to something that might hurt you. And if anyone ever tells you that you can't do something, don't take that as your truth. See it as a challenge, because you can do anything. And the last thing is to pay it forward. Don't let that positivity end with you. If someone gives you a few words of positive encouragement, take a little time to throw that in someone else's direction, because someone else is going to need it too. So let's circle back. What are cosplayers? We are engineers. We are scientists. Teachers. We're carpenters. We're mathematicians. We're actors. We're artists. But most of all, we're families. Costume play, by its very nature, 
is the ability to truly and, and fully explore the characters that we adore enough to emulate even as adults. When we think of it in terms of finding the most empowering outlet possible with which to express yourself and push yourself outside the confounds of your comfort zone, then donning a costume for a day and sinking into something different doesn't seem so strange. I hope that I've been able to make you understand a little bit more about cosplayers and what we do and why we do it. So, thank you.